Welcome back Gadgeteers. Today we're going to talk about the Raspberry Pi. Specifically, I have a Raspberry Pi 2 here that my son has given me and I've always been really curious about these so I decided I was going to go ahead and set it up with Raspbian which is an operating system based on Linux which is based on Debian Linux that I want to install on this unit and see what it is I can do with this and how capable this unit is. Now, the unit I have here is a Raspberry Pi 2 Model B with 1 gigabyte of RAM. I also have a 32 gigabyte card that I'm going to use to put into the Raspberry Pi so that I can have some possibly media on it. I might put a few movies on it. Now, I've also bought a small case, so we're going to go through and put the case on. I was under the impression that the case came with some heat sinks for the processors but there were none so we're going to put it together anyway and and see what it can do as is but i th i'm thinking i'm going to go ahead and get those heat sinks it just makes sense to me to help dissipate the heat but anyway we'll try it and see what happens okay first things first you're going to need a couple of software packages to be able to install the raspbian operating system to the raspberry pi so the first thing i did was opt to download the raspbian stretch with desktop straight from raspberrypi.org and i chose to download the torrent which for me tends to be considerably faster so i've got the torrent here it's already downloading and now i am letting that torrent seed so that other people can also get the torrent downloaded so just a point here that uh, torrent software is very popular and there are legal torrents that people do download i use torrents uh, torrenting to download pretty much any of my Linux operating system or large packages because I can get it so much faster. I literally was able to download this package in about 30 seconds which for 1.6 gigabytes is really really awesome. So I chose to download the Raspbian Stretch with desktop instead of the Raspbian Stretch Lite because I wanted to play around with the desktop and just see what the capabilities of the Raspberry Pi are and how much work I can do on the desktop. I'm very curious. So I chose to download the Raspbian Stretch with desktop as opposed to the Raspbian Stretch Lite, which is a very minimal image and it sounds like it doesn't have any graphical interface. Now, I know that Raspbian with the desktop comes with uh, LibreOffice and some other tools. So I'm pretty excited to test it out and see how it works. The second thing you're going to need is a software tool called Etcher. Etcher is used to actually take that image that you downloaded via the torrent software and put it on your memory card. When you go ahead and download Etcher, make sure you do have the Linux x64 selected. I mistakenly downloaded the 32-bit version and I had to install some libraries for 32-bit in order to get it to work. So by default, it wisely and correctly selected the Linux X64, which is perfect. So that's what I needed. And I think that depending on which operating system you have, it'll more than likely select the correct operating system. So you won't have to worry about which package to download. It should have correctly selected it for you. After you've downloaded Etcher, it's a very simple install actually. All you have to do is download it and an app image is actually a completely compressed, well it's not compressed so much as it's a complete image with all the libraries and any associated packages that it needs inside the app image. So it should be able to run just by double clicking it whether you're in Linux, Mac or Windows. Then, once you run it, you'll see the Etcher software, and before I can go through and do this, I actually have to install the memory card into my computer. Fortunately for me, I do have a memory slot in the Dell that I picked up, model 5675, so what I have here is, of course, a adapter card for the smaller 32 gigabyte 
memory card that I have. So here I have my micro SD 32 gigabyte memory card and I've got my handy adapter here so I'm gonna go ahead and plug the card into the adapter and of course I want to make sure that the write option is turned on on the card there's a small switch there that's important because we want to be able to write to this card so I'm gonna go ahead and install this in the drive and we're going to go ahead and select the image now. So I'm going to click in Etcher software, select image. And I know it's in my downloads folder. And I see I have, let's see. Yep, there it is right there. I'm wondering if I need to uncompress it. Let's check real quick. No, it says here we can just select the zip. So we're gonna try that and see if it works. We'll click open. And it has correctly selected my SA32 gigabyte card. So we're gonna go ahead and flash it. And we gotta provide the password, which is the root password. And hopefully this won't take too long. All right, well, while we're waiting, I wanted to show you what I've got here. So I've got a case that I can use to protect the Raspberry Pi 2. In this box, I have a power supply, which actually comes with assorted adapters. This one I'm not familiar with. This one here is... Uh, I know it can be used in the Middle East and then we have the actual adapter which I've already converted to the US type of adapter for power and of course we have I believe this one's for the UK and possibly parts of Europe as well so it's a nice little package it comes with everything that we need on it I'm gonna get this out of the plastic real quick and we're gonna have a look at this under the camera so this particular unit looks like its input is 100 to 240 volt which makes sense so you can plug it in pretty much anywhere in any country 50 to 60 Hertz 0.3 amps input output is plus 5 volts 2 amps it says level three efficiency level so I'm thinking it's specialized for uh, supporting the Raspberry Pi to ensure that it does get uh, consistent power and it uses a standard I don't know if you can see that micro USB now the Raspberry Pi itself is here this is version 2 what I understand is the processor on here is supposed to be the same as version 3 so I'm seeing here it has a Broadcom uh, BCM 2836 RIF BG processor and there's another chip on here Let's see if we can get that in focus SMSC. Now I know that you can get heat sinks for both of these processors here. And there's another chip on the back. I'm not sure what this one is for. Elpida, E L P I D A. And there's a feature connector here. Um, I know that you can add more things to the Raspberry Pi. Now this one does not have Bluetooth or. Uh, Wi-Fi built in so I'm gonna experiment I do have a Wi-Fi controller that I'm gonna try to use in one of the USB ports and I also have a wireless keyboard and mouse so I'm gonna have three of the four taken up right right from the get-go now it does have an Ethernet jack I'm not too certain on what the power or uh, what the speed is on that we're gonna check here on the box no, the, the box doesn't say. I'm sure it says inside. I'm guessing it's a gigabit Ethernet. I can't imagine that it's anything less than that. It could be 100 megabit, but I highly doubt it. It has a HDMI out port, and it has 
another connector here and they are labeled pretty good this one is for a camera and then there's another connector here see if we can get that to focus again come on which is apparently for display purposes so you could add a display connection of some sort there as long as I've got the HDMI out it works great for me and it looks like either a headphone jack or possibly a combo headphone microphone jack and on the bottom there is the actual slot for the micro SD card that we're gonna put in and incidentally that micro SD card to flash it is taking quite a while it's saying about nine minutes left and it's 43 percent into the flash let's see if I can get that on here for you there we go so we're at about 44 percent so it's gonna be a little while for that to complete okay anyway so here we have the card and here I've got the case which this was only a six dollar case and I looked at all the different cases that were available and quite frankly this is the one that I wanted um, I like the clear design case I think they're pretty cool you know because you can see what's inside there and it comes with a little pair of feet inside so I'm gonna try and open this up now I've never opened one of these up and the other thing is uh, I'm trying to do this while looking through the camera which makes it really tricky so try not to laugh too hard if I don't know what the heck I'm doing I notice it's got these pop tabs in here so it looks like it's I'm not gonna say it's fragile but I'm thinking I have to be careful give me a second I'm gonna take a look at this with my actual eye I'm thinking it yeah that's what it is it's, it's basically a, you push on the plastic here and it's very very it's very gentle so it opens up comes with little feet which I think is cool the little rubber feet to put on the bottom so we'll do that as well and I'm certain you can only put this in one way so let's see I'm thinking it's gonna end up going this way and it just sits in here at least it should <laughs> we hope yep it snaps in it's got little pins that's pretty nice and then the case goes over the top and of course the connector there is open so you can get to it uh, let's see if I can get that there we go all right so now I've got a case that you'll be able to see the processor in there I think that's pretty neat and you can get access to all the different connections here and there's the memory card slot and I don't have to worry about it getting damaged now it does have pretty basic heat convection slots on the bottom and really none on the top but it doesn't need it with these large openings here so I think it'll be okay I kind of wish it had some kind of door that closed over this part and there's another slot there so it's definitely going to have enough openings for heat convection okay so I'm gonna get the power supply hooked up and get it plugged in well no I'm not gonna plug it in yet because it's it's definitely doesn't have the card in it yet uh, but I'll get it all connected I'll go get my mouse and keyboard equipment so we can get that going as well all right so I have my Wi-Fi keyboard here the Logitech keyboard again this is something my son gave me and I've used it so much for all kinds of different projects I've used it in my room to hook up to a computer that's hooked up to my TV I've used it in my living room it's just an awesome tool to have and a Logitech Wi-Fi mouse now I have here I've got the Logitech now you notice I painted this one green with a marker that's the one for my keyboard this is the one for my mouse and then last I have a Wi-Fi wireless AC adapter so I'm hoping that this particular adapter will work with the version of Linux that I'm using Raspbian this is a Linksys 
Wi-Fi AC adapter model AE6000 and I've used this particular one in Linux before so again I'm really hoping that uh, it's gonna work okay so I'm gonna plug this back in I'm still waiting for the card to finish flashing so once that gets gets done we'll get started here but for right now we're just waiting so I have my HDMI connector here this connector goes to my secondary TV which is over here you can't see it really that well yeah you can see the edge right there so I'm gonna hook it up to this particular TV so I can still have my main monitor here being used for um, Fedora Linux in case I have to get drivers or anything like that so this is a TV uh, I got it for very little money at Best Buy and it works great for what I do I wanted it to be able to watch some TV stations and addition additionally I can use it as a monitor so it works really well okay as you can see here the flash process is completed so I'm gonna go ahead and, and close etcher and I'm gonna go down here and I want to eject this let's just make sure okay it looks like it's already ejected so I should be okay to go ahead and pull the card out so I'm gonna grab that card and here is that adapter I was telling you about and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the memory card the micro SD card right there and this ends up going on the bottom here I always forget which way but I think this is the correct way if it doesn't I guess we'll find out soon enough yes it does fit in there and it's a clicker so you do have to push it hard enough to click it in. Now the one thing I don't like is, well I guess it doesn't stick out on the top, just a hair. So I think that's forgivable. No, not even that. So it is slightly indented. Okay, so we've got the card in there. And we have the keyboard, we have the mouse. I don't actually know how to turn this thing on. I'm gonna plug in the power cord here. So, I don't know if you can see that. Let me change that. There we go. Okay, so here's the unit and here's the power cord. And I need to switch my monitor to the secondary input. And I'm going to plug in power. I have no clue if this is how, if it powers up the minute it gets the power plugged in. I guess we'll find out okay power has been plugged in and I'm gonna turn on my keyboard and turn on my mouse well no that's not how it turns on so I might actually have to pull the manual out oh I didn't plug the power in on the floor I think that might be an important factor to consider one moment okay power is plugged in on the floor I've got some LEDs here and I'm seeing activity on the screen resized root file system rebooting in one in five seconds Now so far it says it's in 1080p. I don't want to get too close to the screen here. Welcome to Raspy and Pi. No mouse or size yet. I'm sure we gotta have a keyboard by now. It's loading rc.local service. So here's an interesting thing. These probably aren't the fastest booting systems there are, I'm thinking. What do you think? Raspberry Pi login. Pi, automatic login. Interesting. So it is using an automatic login.
So these apparently aren't that fast. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised. It is running on one gigabyte and it has a very basic processor. Debian GNU Linux comes with absolutely no warranty to the extent permitted by applicable law. They're free software. And it's running kernel 4.9.59. Login timed out after 60 seconds. I wonder what that's all about. Okay, so we're logged in, I'm thinking, but we have no GUI. What, is, what happens if we do start X? Theoretically, that should run the GUI. File home pi X authority does not exist. Xorg X server 1.19.2. Using system config directory, user share x11, xorg.comp.d. Okay, well, it looks like the desktop finally loaded up. Um, no wireless interfaces found, but I did plug in my Wi Fi card, but it doesn't seem to recognize it. Now, I do have another Wi Fi card that I could experiment with that may work. It's just the question of what did I do with it? But we'll check that out in a second. First, let's see what we've got installed here. I've done a bit of research on this, so there's a ton of programming tools here. We have the basic Office. I'm going to launch LibreOffice Writer. And it is running version 5, which is fine for me. It's interesting because my screen here is not filling up the entire window. I do have a menu mode here I can do where I can turn on overscan. That's a little better. Move this over here a little bit. And we're going to look at desktop preferences. So we can turn documents on. Well, I was, yes, we can. Oh, let's see what else we have. Menu bar, system pretty basic. I'm going to click OK. Now I have documents on the desktop. So LibreOffice opened and is working great. This is not the fastest system in the world, but it, it certainly works. And of course we have a terminal. I'm wondering if we have a tool to show us. I don't see any. So this is kind of basic. Task Manager, that's what I was looking for. CP usage, not very much. That's incredible. This thing is only using 125 megabytes of one gig installed. I mean, that is astounding. I cannot believe they can make a version of Linux that is so lean and mean. That's incredible. Uh, up here we have icons. We've got web browser, file manager, terminal, Mathematica, Wolfram, and we're running LibreOffice and Task Manager. So these are the tools that we're running. And if we click the Pi, of course we looked at this. We've got tons of programming tools. Now some of these are great for beginning programmers. So I'm thinking I'm going to look into this. I think this would be really interesting for me. Office has LibreOffice. We have Internet. Uh, we've got the Chromium web browser, which is good. Clause Mail, I doubt I would use that. VNC Viewer. Connect to computers running VNC Viewer or Server. I'm wondering if I could put Server on here. I bet I could. Uh, for those of you who don't know, VNC Viewer is an awesome tool that you can use to log in and see the graphical desktop display of another system. So that's a nice tool. We have some gains here. We actually have Minecraft here and some Python games. Uh, accessories, calculator, file manager, image viewer, PDF viewer, SD card copier, task manager, terminal, and text editor. You know, now that I'm thinking of it, I think the reason that the boot up for this system was so slow is because of the fact that it's running off an SD card. And I probably would have to look at getting a faster SD card. I'm guessing that my the micro SD card I have in there isn't really that fast. 
Debian reference, Raspberry Pi help, and some preferences, add and remove software, appearance, audio driver, audio device settings, which at this point would be the TV, main menu editor, mouse and keyboard settings, and Raspberry Pi config. So let's see if it knows it's got audio. It doesn't seem to know. Select controls. Well, I really would have to have some kind of sound to test or a video or something like that. And right now I can't connect to the interwebs because I don't have a physical connection in this room. I think what I'm going to do is go see if I can find that older uh, Wi-Fi USB card I have and put it in and see what happens. Okay, I've found my older Wi-Fi card. It's actually a Netgear, I think it's an N-Type, and this one always works in any flavor of Linux I use, so I'm kind of hoping that the Raspberry Pi can see it. And I'm hoping I don't have to do a reboot. We'll see. So I'm going to unplug the other card I had in here and plug in my older card, the Netgear Wireless N. Can't remember. Yep, it does have a light, and the light has just come on. So there is some hope. Might not have a driver for it. I really don't know. Oh, nope, there it is. Look at that. So it is seeing my Wi-Fi connection. All right, so we're now trying. Oh, we are connected. I hate that it, these Linux versions cannot use my newer Linksys AC connector, but they can use the older one. Now we should be able to get into the internet. All right, so let's try and play a video and see what it can do. I'm going to grab Task Manager and move it down here. So CPU went way up. Look at that memory though. I cannot believe this system is so good at managing that memory. I mean that's absolutely incredible. And the audio is coming through on my TV. Let's go full screen see what happens. All right, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. So it is, well, <laughs> I would say it's not running it in high def, and I would definitely say that, yeah, the CPU there is pretty much. Let's find a video that's a little bit more active. Um, there's one I usually use. I want to show it for a little bit. Uh, we'll do the. It's a 4K video. Costa Rica. I'm not going to actually run it in 4K, of course. Hopefully, it'll default and go somewhat slower. So there, there, you know, is some hesitation there. But again, I don't think this is an issue of memory or CPU. I think I'm just going to have to look to look to I'll do this this small one. I think I'm going to have to look to get in that other memory card. So, this should not run in 4K by default is what I'm thinking. I just wanted to see a video with a little bit more motion. And I'm going to see right now it's running quality 3 360p. I'm going to move it up to 720p. And we'll see if we kill the processor. And it's going up a little bit there, 84, 100%. Um, yes, it can play it in 720p. I think when I move the mouse, though, it actually stops. That's incredible. So we've got a 720p window here, and it's actually doing a pretty decent job of it. A little hesitation when it gets started, but after that, it takes off. And, you know, I really didn't 
create set up this uh, Raspberry Pi to do play video necessarily. I was thinking of putting Cody or something like that on it. Alright, well I've done a few things with the Raspberry Pi that I want to show you. Um, just so you know, what I'm doing right now is running VNC server on the Raspberry Pi, so the screen uh, frame rate is going to be very slow as I move things around. It is not a reflection of the Pi itself. It's actually because I'm using VNC, which is a server that you can use, and I'm going to show you how to set that up in just a minute here. Okay, so what I did... Here I am on the Raspberry Pi. If you click on the little Pi here and cruise over to Preferences and then Raspberry Pi Configuration, there's actually quite a few settings here that you can change, which I have. Uh, one thing I did, of course, is change the password name. The I have left the host name the same. Uh, the other thing that I did, disable underscan. So I disabled underscan, which basically was making my uh, 1920 by 1080 p screen not fill up the entire screen. So all I had to do was disable that and it filled up the whole screen. Now on interfaces here, you've got some options. So I enabled the SSH interface so that I could log in via SSH and I also enabled VNC and with that enabled I was actually able to VNC into the system so that I could see the network so if I click well actually let me show you the other things I did now I have not overclocked it yet because I don't have the heat sinks yet but eventually I'll do that but I did increase the GP GPU memory from 64 megabytes to 96 megabytes and it definitely seems a little bit more responsive I don't know that I'll go any higher than that it seems to do pretty well at that particular setting and I did also install using apt-get um, a desktop recorder but I, I have a feeling that it really wouldn't do all that well so I opted instead to use VNC to do my recording which as you can see you do get some uh, slower frame rates but even so and and you, you can see some artifacting up here but even so it's still perfectly awesome now if I move my mouse up here I have some VNC options and I'm gonna go ahead and restore it down and now you can see here I am on my regular desktop but I'm VNC would in and I can scale this to pretty much any size I want which I think is really nice because then I can do things on the Pi I can get access via SSH or via the GUI and I don't know if you noticed but you can choose whether or not you want the GUI to start and if this was going to be a headless uh, media server, you probably wouldn't want the GUI to start up. You could use SSH if you needed to log into it, and you could even start the GUI that way if you wanted to. Now, the first time it booted up, remember, it was really slow. Well, after it had been running and I made some setting changes, I was required to do a reboot, which I did, and it rebooted much, much faster than it did the first time so I don't know if it that was the first time boot up thing but it seemed to boot way faster so very cool setup now I can you know record the desktop of the Raspberry Pi as I do more things using VNC eventually I'm gonna try out the record my desktop and just see how good it does I have a feeling it's not gonna be all that great so that way I can get access to my desktop even if I am on a different computer as long as the Pi is running somewhere. I think that's totally awesome. There's so many things I could do with this Raspberry Pi. I'm pretty excited about it. With regard to heat sinks, according to the research that I've done, they are not necessary for the Raspberry Pi. If you want to find out what the temperature is for the Pi, you can run this command here. 
VGen CMD measure temp. I also added the watch command so every two seconds the temp would be displayed again. So if I use the up arrow and press enter, I can see that the temperature is 42 degrees now. If I go up to the Raspberry Pi preferences and config, what I could do is go into performance, set it for high. It will need a reboot. I'm not going to do the reboot right now, but what I am going to do is run a video and we're going to see how it affects the temperature. But overall, it looks like the Pi really is pretty smart about temperature. The other thing I'm going to go ahead and do is go into preferences, uh, no accessories, yes, and run task manager. So I just want to see how fast the processor is running. Now remember this rate you're seeing here for the video, this is not the actual frame rate of the video. It actually looks just fine. Remember we're using VNC right now, so it's not going to look pretty and you're not going to hear anything. It's actually running perfectly well on the screen when I look at it. So CPU usage went up a little bit, memory usage still well under control, and the temperature is only at 49.2 and I've heard that the unit will throttle as necessary to slow down uh, to protect the processor from getting damaged by overheating. So the bottom line is the heat sinks are not necessary. All right, all in all, the Raspberry Pi 2 is actually a fairly decent little system. I'm very impressed with its features and capabilities. And I can see that there's actually quite a few different uses that I could have for this particular Pi. I think one of the things that I'm going to do is put in my 128 gigabyte external SanDisk Cruiser UltraFit. It's a very tiny little drive that'll fit in perfectly in that last USB port. I'm going to fill it up with media and probably run it as a Plex server, so either a Plex server or a Kodi server, and then I can have access to my media, and I'll probably take it with me on my road trip coming up soon with my wife. She has to work remotely at a different location, so we're going to be gone for about three weeks. I'm going to be living in a hotel, so I'm getting my gear ready, deciding what it is I want to take with me, and looking forward to the trip, but this little Raspberry Pi, definitely a great system. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. If you do, it really does help out the channel. If you really, really like the video, consider giving a dollar on patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets. Any little bit you can give definitely helps me produce more content. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time on Fast Gadgets. This video was made possible with support from viewers like you. If you find this video useful, consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash fast gadgets.